So I've been making YouTube videos for almost two years now and there are a few questions I always get. How do you make the stickers in your projects? How do I make my videos? How do I edit my video? What tools do I use? What tool is this? And how do I hang my toilet paper? And it's time for some answers. So these are the noteworthy tools that make all my YouTube videos and projects possible. Of course, everything will be linked in the description below, but you know how I love customizing my tools. So just keep that in mind because most of the tools I show you are gonna look a bit different. I'll be going through what I use for YouTube and filmmaking first, then the productivity and desk setup stuff. And then the main tools I use for my art and design projects. And please keep in mind, my first few YouTube videos were all just filmed from my iPhone. So you definitely do not need all of these tools. It's all about what you make and how you choose to tell that story. That's the important stuff. Okay, let's start with the YouTube filmmaking type gear. So everything about my filmmaking setup is built around quality and speed. I have a nine to five job, so I only get time after work to make these videos. So when I'm ready to film, everything needs to be ready to go. They may not be the best nor have the most features, but they're the fastest that I've been able to find for doing what I need them to do. So for starters, I use this quick release plate on everything. Any device that will ever go on a tripod at any point will have this installed. It's fast and just strong enough and that's good enough for me. Now the main camera I'm using right now is the Sony a7C. I use it for all the serious stuff. For casual stuff, I use a ZV-1. It's a nice lightweight point and shoot with a flippy screen. And then for spontaneous stuff, I'm currently using the iPhone 12 Pro because I absolutely love MagSafe. It's so great for attaching battery banks and other accessories. I had a few of these MagSafe magnets left from another project, so I made this. a tripod mount. They do sell these, of course, but I like to design my own stuff whenever I can. Now for tripods, for the main stuff, I have this big sturdy one. And then I got this medium expandable one that I can use on my desk and floor. Next, I really like this tiny one. This Gorilla Pod, it can wrap around stuff and it has these really strong magnets in the feet that allow them to basically be mounted on anything metallic. The magnets are just strong enough to also hold my ZV-1 so it can stand almost anywhere, making them the perfect tool. I really like using it like this, but this is technically over the tripod's weight limit a bit, so do this at your own risk. Now for very spontaneous stuff, I love this thing. You just twist, push, and drop. Yeah, it's that quick. Of course, this is gonna be a bit shaky. It was mostly designed for small area lights, but the hinge on this is also just strong enough to support my iPhone or even the point and shoot. So it's perfect for setting up quick shots. Some other accessories I rely on is this, the Rode Wireless Go mics. They can magnetically attach to your clothing. They're great and I've used them in almost every one of my videos. Next, we got this motorized slider. It's honestly not great. It's a little shaky and it glitches all the time, but the reason I love it so much is how quickly it is to set up. You don't have to use their phone app. You can actually just set a start position, an end position, and you're good to go. All the panning shots for my videos are made using this slider, but lastly, the thing I use the most for filmmaking is actually this rig. Now, as you can see, it's made up of a lot of different products, so I'll just link everything below. But the main reason I use it so much is because of this heavy-duty microphone arm on it that's actually strong enough to hold my main camera. Yeah, it's amazing. And this way, it only takes me a few seconds to set up any kind of shot, even an overhead shot. Isn't that fun? This is basically my camera guy. I should probably name it. Help me come up with a name for this thing. That's pretty much all the studio stuff, but when I'm away from the studio, I actually only carry a few devices. I carry the quick tripod, GorillaPod, ZV-1, an iPhone and a few mounts. Because even though I don't travel often, when I do, I usually have to carry a lot of other devices with me. And a lot of devices mean a lot of power bricks. And if I forget one of these, it's game over. And so that's why I'm so grateful for the sponsor today, Ugreen. They sent me the Ugreen 65 watt Diginest Cube, which now replaces all of these. With its gallium nitride three chip, it can bring fast charging to multiple devices at once. It has three AC outlets, multiple USB and USB-C ports. So it can really power up to seven devices at once while keeping my desk organized. 
I also started using their 7-in-1 USB-C adapter. It has an Ethernet port, SD card reader, two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI and USB-C 4K video output, on top of 100 watt power delivery USB-C ports, so I can charge my devices while using all the features on this tiny hub. Lastly, their desktop tablet stand. I can now draw my iPad comfortably in multiple positions. I need to draw standing up, boom. Ugreen has huge Black Friday discounts, so check out their product link below in the video's description and huge thank you to you Green, for sponsoring this portion of the video and since we're here at my desk let's talk about the desk setup and productivity stuff the first thing that's super important for my productivity is this thing it's a visual timer that I love using for timing focus tasks and breaks I can always easily see how much time I have left and when time's up it doesn't have a very loud annoying alarm it just has a simple I also just recently got into mechanical keyboards and even though I'm pretty new at it, I'm really liking this Keychron one that can switch between three devices via Bluetooth. Also, very satisfying to type on. And another tool that I use a lot are these cards. They're basically these blank hotel cards that I got on eBay that I use as little whiteboards. I write my to-do lists on them and stick them into the back of my keyboard. Super easy to just keep adding stuff onto them and erase them as they get completed. So they're basically reusable sticky notes. And they're also great for brainstorming and storyboarding projects too. And so reusable. I've been using these for almost three years now. Next, we have the Spotify card thing. It allows me to control my Spotify music without Spotify running on my computer, taking up around, or without me needing to reach for my phone, which is always a dangerous distraction. I can take calls on it, and it also has voice control. Hey Spotify, play my liked music. In terms of software, I like to use Adobe Premiere Pro for all my editing, After Effects for the special effects, and then Fusion 360 for all the 3D modeling. That's about it. So lastly, let's talk about the art and design tools I can't live without. Of course, with 3D printers, I'm mostly using the modified Ender 3 Pro and sometimes the Ender 3 S1 Pro. You know these flush cutters that they come with? They're pretty great for cutting filament and wires, but they're massive. I found these much smaller ones that work just as well, and I like these a lot because they don't take up as much room in the drawer. Another 3D printing essential tool is this deburring tool. These are great for adding chamfer to the edges of prints or taking care of the occasional elephant's feet. But let's dive back to more basic tools, starting with knives. Knives are fun, but also very dangerous, so please use them responsibly. My main knife is this Leatherman multi-tool. I try to have this accessible at all times just because of all its features. The pliers, scissors, screwdriver, and my favorite is, of course, the fact that you can open the knife with one hand. Nothing beats that, but this is a big tool, so it's not really my daily carry. For that, I have the micro multi-tool that I keep on my keychain. It doesn't have as many tools, obviously, but the two that I rely on heavily is the scissors and the small knife. It's a great little mini multi-tool. Now, most knives are quick to get out, but slow to put away. And that's not good. Knives can be very dangerous. You want them to be put away when you're not using them. You may have even noticed a few close calls in my past videos when I'm using knives. So for cutting boxes now, I now use this little guy. It's the first knife that I found that's easy to bring out with just one hand, but even quicker to put away because the blade is on a spring. So just the light tap of this orange button and... Is that amazing? So well designed. And when you need to change the blade, you just push it to the end and hold it and voila. Definitely one of my favorite knives ever. Now for the stickers I use across all my projects and customizations, I mainly use two machines. For these kind of labels with the small words, I print them on this label maker from Brother. Then for the larger stickers with letters cut out or stencils I make, I use this plotter tool from Cricut. I type out the designs in Illustrator and then use their tool to send it over to the plotter. Once cut out, I remove the access vinyl and use transfer tape to get it onto wherever I need it. There are a lot more detailed tutorials online for this stuff if you're interested, but that's pretty much the whole process. All right, next we've got the Ryobi tools. You guys have seen these before. There's not a whole lot to say about them, but I do need to show some love to the glue gun because having a battery powered glue gun is such a game changer. It's not too heavy or anything, but the battery is just heavy enough to make it stand all on its own. 
and so you never have to worry about it falling over and making a mess or anything. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but I love this thing so much. I will never go back to a dollar store glue gun again. All right, next we got the motorized screwdrivers. A lot of you guys asked about these and I cannot believe I didn't get into these sooner. If you tinker with 3D printers and stuff often like I do, these will change your life. I got this big one with a sweet light on it and this little one for precision bits. And they have just made assembling 3D printers so much quicker and enjoyable. I actually enjoy putting things together now because of how satisfying these are to use. The company that made this large one here also made this. It's just a tape measure, but out of hundreds I've used before, this one is my favorite for two reasons. One, it auto locks, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it actually makes reaching the ruler across a far distance so much easier. And when you're done, you just click the button, and second, it has a satin finish, so you can easily mark it with a pencil, while on regular glossy ones, you actually can't. Now, when it comes to soldering, I hate soldering. I don't even have a good soldering iron I can recommend you guys. If you guys have any, let me know, please. But I gotta say, I found these magnetic helping hand things, and I really like them. When working on my 3D printer, I can just stick them on metal parts, and I'm good to go. Or I can just stick them to whatever metal object I have lying around. If you haven't noticed yet, I really like magnetic things. They're just so fun and convenient to use. Anyway, I know it's probably pretty surprising that this is the second video I put out this month. There was no three month gap. This is honestly hugely thanks to the sponsors I've met. They really allow me to continue providing quality content for you guys while also experimenting with other video formats like this one. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to even be sponsored. I honestly didn't think that I would ever make it this far with this channel. It's all quite weird, but also super exciting, right? So thanks for being on this journey with me. And of course, this all wouldn't have been possible also without my very supportive family. Huge thank you to my dad and my brother for helping me with a bunch of the super complex shots. They were so much fun to shoot. And also my mom who prepared so many snacks for us. And you know what's the wildest thing? You see these gingerbread cookies? They only have smiles on one side, which means I think my mom has physically placed every cookie into this glass jar one by one to ensure that they were all facing outwards. Yeah, that's the level of attention to detail we have on this crew. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this video format. If you guys like it, I might do something like this every year or every once in a while when I discover cool new tools. And if I missed anything, let me know and I can still add it to the video's description. If you guys have recommendations for even better tools, definitely let me know too because I am pretty new at all this still and so I'm constantly looking for new ways to do things more efficiently. So that's it for this one. I've already started working on the Ender 3 Upgrades Q&A video, so keep those questions coming and uh, I'll see you guys in that one. Thanks for watching.